Organometallic reagents are molecules that contain bonds between carbon and metal atoms, and these organometallic reagents can be used to form bonds between carbon and H atoms and between two carbon atoms. So basically, we can form carbon hydrogen bonds and carbon carbon bonds using these organometallic reagents. So let's begin our discussion with two types of reagents that can be used to form carbon-hydrogen bonds. So we have the Grignard reagent and the organolithium reagent. So let's begin by discussing how we synthesize these types of reagents and let's begin with the Grignard reagent. So if we have an organic halide, our alkyl halide, where this is the hydrocarbon group and this is our halogen, where the halogen is any halogen other than fluoride and we mix it with our magnesium metal in the presence of ether as the solvent, we produce the Grignard reagent. Now if we take this same alkyl halide and we mix it with a lithium in the presence of ether, we produce organolithium reagent. So basically we have resonance stabilized structures. In this case, we have a bond between the carbon on the R group and our metal atom, the magnesium, and this magnesium is also bonded to our halogen. Now the second resonance stabilized structure shows us that because carbon on the R group is more electronegative than the magnesium, this carbon pulls away those electrons and this bears a negative charge, this bears a positive charge. Likewise, in this case, this bears a negative charge, this bears a positive charge. Now, why is it that we cannot use a fluoride for our halogen? Well, fluoride is the most electronegative atom and it forms a very strong bond. So with fluoride, this reaction will not take place. But if we use our iodide chloride or bromide, this reaction will take place. Now the second question is, why do we have to use ether as the solvent? Well, ether is relatively nonpolar, and ether basically creates a very stabilizing structure with our Grignard reagent as well as the organolithium reagent. The ether basically surrounds these two reagents and forms stabilizing interaction between the oxygen of the ether and our metal atom. So for the case of of our Grignard reagent, the magnesium has a partial positive charge, these oxygens will have a partial negative charge, and so they will surround and form stabilizing interactions shown in orange, and this will stabilize these organometallic reagents. Now, what are these reagents actually used for? Well, if we take either the Grignard reagent or the organolithium reagent and we mix them in the presence of water, the Grignard reagent will act as the Lewis base, while the water will act as the Lewis acid and will have a Lewis acid base reaction to produce a bond between carbon and hydrogen. So if we examine this resonance stabilized structure, the R groups bear a full negative charge because the carbon contains those lone pair of electrons. And this can act as a Lewis base in the presence of water Water, the water acts as the Lewis acid and these electrons take the H atom away from water to form the hydroxide, the MgX, where Mg has a positive charge and the bond between carbon on the R group and our H. So we form the carbon H bond. So by using the Grignard reagent or the organolithium reagent, we essentially form carbon hydrogen bonds. So both the Grignard reagent and organolithium reagents, although they are good enough Lewis bases to react with water, they are not very good nucleophiles and will not displace good leaving groups on alkyl halides. So 
Now, if we take, for example, the following molecule, one specific example in which the R group is the ethyl group and our X is the bromide, and we mix it with Mg ether, we produce this resin stabilized structure. Now, we can also mix it with lithium to produce our organolithium reagent. And if we mix it with water in which the H atom has been replaced with deuterium, our rate radioactive atom, we produce the following product in which the bromide has been replaced with our deuterium. So we form a bond between carbon and our deuterium. Notice that this atom or this actually molecule, the R with our two electrons, is not a good enough nucleophile to actually displace this bromide and attach and form a bond between the carbon on this R group and a carbon on this and the carbon on this molecule. However, other organometallic reagents do exist that do form carbon carbon bonds because they do have a good enough nucleophilicity and such organometallic reagents are known as organocuprates. So unlike Grignard and organolithium reagents, organocuprates, also known as Gilman reagent, are good nucleophiles and can displace halides in alkyl halide compounds. So let's begin by discussing how we can actually form our lithium organocuprate, one type of organocuprate. So basically, we have to mix copper iodide with our RLI, where this is our organolithium reagent. If we mix these two, we produce this, and then if we mix it once again with our organolithium reagent, we produce the lithium organocuprate that looks like this. So we have a positive charge on the lithium, a negative charge on this molecule, and they bond via electrostatic forces. So unlike organolithium reagents and our Grignard reagents, which are poor nucleophiles, organocuprates are quite useful because they are good enough nucleophiles to basically displace and replace good leaving groups on primary and secondary carbons. And one particular example, or the general, the general uh, example for this reaction looks something like this. So we have our primary or secondary hydrocarbon that contains the good leaving group where X is our halogen that could be chloride, bromide, or iodide. We mix it with the lithium organocuprate and we produce a bond between the carbon on this atom and a carbon or a carbon on this group and a carbon on this R group. So we form the following carbon-carbon bond and we form this structure here. So Grignard reagent and organolithium reagent are used to form carbon-hydrogen bonds, but organocuprates are used to form carbon-carbon bonds. Now, finally, the final thing I want to briefly talk about are metal hydrides. So metal hydrides are basically complexes that can be used as nucleophiles to replace our good leaving groups on organic halides. So if we, for example, take the following Rx, where R is our organic compound and X is our good leaving group and we mix it with one type of metal hydride, lithium aluminum hydride, in the presence of ether, what happens is our hydride, the H with the two electrons, acts as our good nucleophile attacking the carbon and displacing and replacing this halide to form an RH. So this is one other way in which we can form carbon H bonds. So we can use the Grignard reagent, organolithium reagent, or metal hydrides to form carbon H bonds. And to form carbon-carbon bonds, we use organocuprate reagents, also known as the Gilman reagent.